Would any one of us have believed it? When the first pictures came through, after the Allied forces freed Auschwitz, Bergen-Belsen, and saw the leftovers, the skeleton Jews that barely were alive, many of whom are today as Holocaust survivors living in Israel in freedom with their Auschwitz numbers still tattooed on their arm. Would anyone have believed in 1945-46 when the whole world was in shock? When Senator Jackson, who was then Scoop Jackson, was part and captain of the liberation group of the American soldiers and army, and he saw in the camp these leftovers, and he made a vow, though he had very few Jews in his state, Washington, there are no many Jews in Washington, and yet he became one of the greatest pro-Israel senators in America. Not because he wanted to get the Jewish vote in his state, because there were few Jews. But why did he do it? Because he was there with the party that liberated one of the concentration camps, and he saw the hell through which these Jews had gone, still on their faces, and he made a vow. He said, Lord, as long as I will live, I will, I, pl I pledge to you that I will not forget the plea of your Jewish people. But would have anyone believed it that only 70 years more before the century has ended, the Holocaust ended in 1945. We have not yet come to 2045. We're only in 2013. And the devil is ready to do it again. After all the books that we have read about the Holocaust, all the vows that others have made, all the speeches of cultural people and professors and politicians, this will never happen again. How dare the president of Obama say to the Jews in the APEC conference, I assure you, you have my back. When according to him and his administration, they cannot even in freedom build their own houses in their own city, Jerusalem, and are being criticized for doing so. And maybe, as I call the Prime Minister of Israel, as he will be voted in probably to Tuesday, will look into a world that has had tens of years to digest what happened through Hitler. And he looks around himself and he sees Ahmed Diniat saying the exact same things, like a modern Hitler, that Hitler said in his Mein Kampf. And he sees that Hamas, a pawn of that Hitler, like Ahmadinejad, Hamas in the south, in Gaza, even after the withdrawal of Israel from Gaza, being the masters and making Gaza a terrorist state that only dreams of one thing, to destroy Israel for Iran and for Allah. He sees in the north the Hezbollah. He sees in Syria those that want to take away Assad, that whatever people say what he's doing, how terrible it is. Everybody who in the Middle East is knows that when these radical Muslims, some of them linked to Al-Qaeda, will unseat Assad, Israel will have a worse enemy in Damascus than even Assad. From Lebanon to Syria, King Hussein's days are numbered, I believe. The Muslim Brotherhood in in link with President Morsi, who was one of the first to make an official visit of friendship to Ahmadinejad. Benjamin Atiyah will be voted in for the third time in office as Prime Minister of Israel. 
in a very cold and cruel world. Not that. The devil is nearly ready to do it again, do again what he did in Europe. But the same world that said, we will not let this happen. Europe and America is sometimes more critical of Israel than that they stand up against this array from Egypt to Gaza, from Gaza to Syria, from Syria to Lebanon, and behind there, the claws of a modern Hitler-like Ahmadinejad. Because we love our oil, and because we are afraid of 40 Muslim states that have many of their Muslim adherents living in our cities and in our, uh, in our countries. And we have to be politically correct. Who would have believed it? If in 1946 I would have said to Christians weeping, to the Corrie ten Booms who cared, who risked their lives for the Jews to be saved as Corrie ten Boom, my fellow countryman, countrywoman did, who would have believed if they then would have said, but you know, before the century is out, the devil will have an array of more people against that Jewish people gathered according to God's will in their own land to finish them off and the world will be critical, none of them so much as of Israel. Therefore I say, with God's word, I looked for comforters and I found none, Jeremiah says. And the God that looks for comforters of his people speaks to us, his church. Those who say that they believe in the God of Israel and in his son, comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. They are so alone that I pray that God will raise up like Corrie ten Boom, Niemullers, Rhys Howells that prayed the Jews through the Second World War in his wonderful story that Norman Grapp wrote about him. Intercessors, rise up, come to the Feast of Tabernacles, show your colors. Don't just pray in your home a prayer for the Jews. Say God. If I have to comfort the Jewish people and prevent a second Holocaust, show me how to do it. And then I, and I know what I'm saying, then I say we stand on solid ground. God needed only one David to slay Goliath. He needed only one Gideon with 300 men to win the battle. He needed only one Joshua and Caleb, one honest, broken Queen Esther, there are senators, congressmen, journalists that God says, what do you do? If one woman, Esther, could break the evil plan of what was then an Ahmadinejad, an Haman, who already had the seal of the king of Persia to slay the Jews, how much more today? If you're a politician or a pastor or just a simple woman that knows the place of prayer, I say, thank you, Lord. You only need 300 Gideonites, only two Joshua and Caleb's, only one Esther, only one Mordecai that says it's enough. And you, as we read in the Bible, can bring Israel there according to your purpose through those who want today to give themselves completely to God, to cleanse their lives from every sin and compromise, that they, at this hour, can be the Corrie ten Booms, the Mordecais, the Esthers, the Joshuas, the Gideons, the Davids, that don't just have a wonderful church where they worship the Lord, but use the worship as David to become, yes, a worshiper of God and a warrior for his people. May God make us W, W, worshiper and warrior and slay the Goliaths by the Holy Ghost that are threatening 
what God has established in Israel to bless the whole world. In the coming months, Iran will have their nuclear weapon. Stop and think for a moment if Ahmadinejad would be true to his words and use his nuclear warheads as he promised to annihilate Israel. Does Iran need to bomb the Jewish state in order to destroy Israel? Or is there a hidden plan that could bring an equal destruction? One we could not even begin to fathom, even if Iran will never use their weapons, which is what everyone hopes. Just the fact that they are in their possession will change the course of history. Once Iran has her nuclear weapons, the balance of forces in the Middle East will change entirely. Within days, a blanket of fear will be spread over the neighboring Arab countries, Egypt, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, and countries of the Persian Gulf will not have a choice but to cut off any and all alliances with the US. They will be forced to obey every command coming from the oppressive dictatorship of Iran. Everyone will know now who is calling the shots. The fear-paralyzed Islamic Middle East will now be sucked into becoming puppet nations of Iran. This has already transpired to Syria, Lebanon, and now even Turkey. It's actually the Iranian nuclear scare over the Arab nations that would be the greatest threat to Israel. President Barak. The Middle East will never be the same again. Any political decision that would not serve the complete interest of the Iranian government would be considered as a traitor to the new boss and the neighborhood. Iran will become the leader of the Arab world, the renewed Persian Empire. Now that the entire oil of the Middle East is controlled by Iran, America and Europe will be forced to do anything to appease Iran. When Iran threatened, at the time which I will decide, Europe will freeze in the winter. It was just a very small preview of the fear and panic that will terrorize all the nations of the world. Fears of energy crisis, fears of financial collapse, and of course, the fear of national security is what will enslave the leaders of every nation to Iran's demands. Will they choose the interest of Israel above their own countries? Do you think they will listen to the cries of the small Jewish state? Or they will choose to listen to the people they actually represent? Who would rather choose the destiny of Israel when the destiny of their own country is at stake? When they are subject to these words? No matter how much a president may hold Israel in the highest regard, he still won't have a choice. Israel will be a small price to pay for any leader of the world. So who will be there? The UN? Do you seek the destruction of Israel or don't you seek the destruction of Israel? I think I deserve an answer, sir. This is the United Nations. Next question, please. This is the United Nations, and I think, sir, I deserve an answer. An answer.